Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do ribs, and I use these Swift Premiums from Costco. Now, you can use the baby backs, but I like to use these uh, St. Louis style spare ribs. I think they're better. Now, with these ribs, you have this membrane that goes along here, and you want to get that off. Now, there's a trick I've learned with this. The, the most important thing you can have is a piece of paper towel. This stuff, you can't get it with your fingers. It just slips right through. Now, if I grab it with a piece of paper towel, I want to show you something. I can take this, and I can rip it right off. You can see that was real easy. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, right there is the bone. Here's a thin piece of membrane. Here's the thicker piece of membrane. That's what you want off. If you pull this off, then all your ribs start separating and pulling apart. You want to leave that if you can. Now, some people will sit here and trim and mess around with that, but you really don't have to. It's all going to pull right off with a piece of paper towel. My finger, it just slips out. But what I want to show you, too, is I was able to grab that pretty easy, but sometimes, take this spot right here, sometimes you'll have to kind of get underneath there. There. You can see I'm getting underneath that little spot, and I can get a little purchase, get a little spot that I can grab with the paper towel, you gotta have a little dry spot, that's the key. And you can see, then you can grab it, okay? So there I grabbed it, and you'll notice I left the, un the membrane underneath. So sometimes you have to take a knife and just kind of get in between those two layers. If it takes you more than a couple of seconds, you probably, you know, need to do it a little different. Now I'm just gonna grab this, and you can see it peels right off. Now look at that. Try doing that without a piece of paper towel, and you won't get very far. Now you see there, it just kind of rips off, goes all the way up. Now you could probably call that good, okay? But there is this little spot right here that it kind of tore. So I'm gonna get that little spot. I got a little mustard on this knife. I think I got it, but let me get a dry piece of paper towel so I can grab it. There. Now that comes off. Okay, that one's fighting me a little bit, but I've only got a little teeny spot here and here. A lot of people don't even take it off, so that's not a big deal. Now this piece of meat right here, a lot of people might think, oh, I'm gonna get rid of that or this. Let me tell you, that's like the best part. This along here, that's the best part. Now, I like to use a rub for this. The rub is salt, pepper, paprika, um, and garlic powder. You can use other stuff, obviously. Um, you can use, you know, some onion salt, or I mean, I wouldn't use onion salt, but onion powder. Um, we use a lot of paprika, but you just kind of liberally put that on. Now, oh, I made a big crucial mistake. We're gonna start over on this side. Take it, put a little yellow mustard on there. Now, you probably are not gonna taste the yellow mustard. Um, you know, I've had it where like once I think I detected a faint flavor of mustard, which a lot of times people will add mustard to the rub anyway, so that's no big deal. But generally, you can't even taste it. And you can go as liberal as heavy or as heavy as you want on this. There's, oh, brown sugar in this. And uh, you can look and I'll show you the recipe. But you can make this just absolutely coated and, you know, basically, basically make the whole thing look like that if you want. I've started curtailing that a little bit because I think that it's a little harder to taste the meat. Um, and the meat is supposed to be the star of the show. The spices are supposed to just be a, you know, a nice addition to it. Um, I think the mustard, I think it's mostly, everybody does it, I think it's mostly just to give a place for this to, to hold on to. And you can see, you do want to do both sides because you're going to eat everything you see here except the bones. And you got to break up those little pieces of sugar and that spice. You can see sometimes you get those little balls of sugar that don't really break up. Um, I also like to get it, you know, along the edges too. But that's it. Now I'm going to take these, I'm going to cover them in foil, and I'm going to bake them in the oven. Uh, I'll put the time and, and uh, the temperature down on the, email, on the uh, URL. But um, when you get done with this, you're going to end up with a plate, a tray, and when you remove 
the tin foil off of this, it's going to be a moat of liquid. And that's really good liquid to use for other things. Um, so just pour that off into, you know, some sort of a, uh, another container that you can keep that for later. You can freeze it if you want. Then I'm just going to take the ribs themselves. At that point, they're done. They're cooked. They're fall apart. But I still go out and I grill them. I'm going to grill those just to dry them out. They might get a little bit of brown here and there, but my goal is just to dry them out at that point so that they're perfect for eating, but they're completely cooked. So that's it. Okay, now taking these out of the oven is kind of delicate because with that foil there, you don't know how full these are, and sometimes they can be pretty full. This one you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff there. And uh, we're gonna pour this off, and I'll just, you're fine, and let me just show them. Take this, this is like liquid gold, but you gotta be careful not to burn yourself. Um, this makes great beans. So uh, you want to uh, you want to preserve this stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside now and I'm going to grill this because you can see it's just it's like it's been steamed. It's too wet. You want to get it good and dry and edible. All right. Now this is the ribs. You can see we're just giving them a good drying out. They'll probably only be in here five ten minutes. That'll be it. Okay. You can see right there if I zoom in. Where's we're sizzling, the meat is sizzling, so it's drying out nicely. Now you don't want it to look like petrified wood either. You know that spot up there, eh, it's getting a little dry, but what matters is the inside. Mm -hmm.